me tell you a story about Vincenzo Linardi, the most stylish Italian man ever to come to Glasgow. But he wasn't here just because this has always been a stylish city. Linardi was here because he was a pioneer of flight. Scotland's love affair with ballooning began a way back in 1784 with James Teitler, who flew half a mile across Edinburgh. But it wasn't until the suave Italian aeronaut Vincenzo Linardi came to Glasgow that Scotland's love for ballooning really took off. When Linardi came to Glasgow in the October of 1785, he exhibited his balloon right here in the choir of Glasgow Cathedral and visitors were charged a shilling to view it. Vincenzo's balloon created quite a spectacle. It was green, yellow and pink, made of 140 square meters of silk. Vincenzo Linardi bought his balloon right here to St Andrew's Square. A huge crowd gathered to wave him off as he set off on his great adventure. The handsome debonair Italian had the women swoon as he stepped into his basket. The crowd roared as the balloon ascended. On November the 23rd, 1785, Vincenzo Linardi's historic flight set off from right here. He flew up into the sky and the weather was with him. The winds were just perfect for his ascent and he found himself flying high above the city, out across the hills, finally landing 110 miles away where he landed at the trembling feet of shepherds in Hoyk. After his first successful flight from Glasgow, Linardi was inspired to try the Glasgow elements again and so he returned at the beginning of December to here, St Andrew's Square. However, this time the crowd was bigger and in the crowd was a local character by the name of Lothian Tam. Lothian Tam was a well-known local alcoholic. He'd seen the immense pink, yellow and green balloon and it sparked his interest. So he decided he wanted to join Vincenzo Linardi on his second flight from Glasgow. The balloon ascended a full six meters with Lothian Tam dangling by his leg upside down from the basket. It took several minutes for Linardi to cut the rope free and Lothian Tam plummeted to these very cobbles. But it was okay. Lothian Tam was so inebriated, he never even felt the fall. After these adventures, Linardi got the nickname the Daredevil Aeronaut. He became the heartthrob of thousands of Scottish women. They even started to wear balloon-shaped bonnets, which they called Linardi's. Linardi's historic balloon flight from Glasgow is what started the craze for aviation. Well, our very own Judith joins us now. What an extraordinary story about this Italian. Is it quite well known in Glasgow? I don't know how well known it is, actually. No, I don't think it is, because I, a lot of people are amazed when I, I mention the fact. I mean, Glasgow was right on the forefront of flight, not just hot air ballooning, but with things like in later years, we had the R-34, which was an airship, and that was the mm -hmm. first one to fly across the Atlantic. Might do a feature on that one day. Mm -hmm. That's an amazing yeah. story. We really look forward to take <laughs> note, right? We want to hear about that one. How did, uh, how did he end up getting to Glasgow? Well, he was already in the UK. He was actually the um, secretary to the Neapolitan ambassador, and he got caught up in the whole idea of flight and ballooning. It was a new fad, but he'd heard that Scotland was probably better for flight. And then he heard that Glasgow had the best prevailing winds. So that's why he came to Glasgow. And he was right. He flew 110 miles to Hoyk. My yeah, goodness. Who'd have thought that? We have the best prevailing winds yeah, here in Glasgow. I know. Maybe that explains the changeable weather that we get every, Absolutely, every half yeah, hour Absolutely, yeah, it probably does, actually. Um, but he seems like he was very popular with the Glasgow ladies. He was <laughs> huge with the Glasgow ladies. In fact, Scottish women were obsessed with Lenardi at the time. He was the big heartthrob. They had big balloon-shaped skirts which had balloons printed on them and balloon-shaped bonnets called Lunardis. That's quite a, quite a fashion statement compared to like just going from something that mm. happened in the city, it changes the way they oh, dress. But he was so handsome as well. <laughs> I think that helped. He was a bit of a heartthrob in his day. Would he have stood out in sort of the population of that day in Glasgow? I think so. 
I think he would have done. He was very debonair, very Italian, you know, very well dressed, took a lot of pride in his appearance. But then Glasgow's always been a stylish city as well. Absolutely, as you're demonstrating well tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jennifer. And uh, the balloon that, that he, uh, he flew in was, uh, stood out, didn't it? It did. It was a massive, great big balloon. It was actually, I think it was 140 square metres of pink, green and yellow silk. Wow. So not the shy type then? No. It would yeah. have definitely made a bit of a, 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 spect a spectacle yeah. in Glasgow because people had never seen hot air balloons before or hi you know, hydrogen balloons or anything like that. It was a new thing, this whole idea. That's great. It was made out of silk as well. It was silk, yes. That's a bizarre fabric to be flying in the balloon. Is it the same sort of, that's obviously very different today. Well, I mean, silk is a very strong fibre and I think that's why they used it. And some of the fibres were actually rubberized, so Originally, I think it was white as opposed to yellow that was in the silk, yeah. but the the um, the lamination they put on of latex turned it yellow. <laughs> <laughs> and so it sounds like the kind of guy that the, the paparazzi would would have loved with the press interested in. Oh, the time. very much so. The Glasgow Mercury really did a fantastic collection of features following Vincenzo Lenardi, who actually flew five times in Scotland, twice from Glasgow, but the Glasgow flight. The, the big one was the most successful one. And did he actually launch from St Andrews Square? Is yes, that where he both took off times. from? That's incredible. Yeah. How did they have enough space in that area? Was it the building still there as we know well, today? Well, you still had the church there, the beautiful St Andrews in the Square. Yeah. It's such a great location, isn't it? It's it is. an amazing beautiful. location. But a lot of the other buildings around that area, well, they're Victorian, so mm -hmm. they wouldn't have been there. So it would have been a much more open space than what we see today. A bit easier to do a balloon takeoff from then. <laughs> yeah. And um, was he the kind of, it doesn't sound like the shy type, but when he was launching an air balloon, mm -hmm. was it a mass event? Did lots of people turn up to attract huge oh, crowds? Oh, thousands. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, the crowds are estimated at over 150,000 turning wow. up for that event. Like people from all over yeah. the city just absolutely. coming down to have a have I a watch. I think what Glasgow Green's mm -hmm. like when we have big festivals there and it's absolutely packed. That on St Andrew's Square, yeah. twice the size. And it was people from all the villages around Glasgow because, of course, Glasgow was only a tiny little city at this time. It hadn't become the big, big yeah. Victor Victorian mass that we see today. So it was villages. People came from all over just to see Vincenzo Lunardi, who was so famous at that time. That's right. very cool indeed. Now you've got a wee certificate with you I today. Did. An award. Is this an, an award. award. Oh so fantastic. Very nice. Certificate of achievement. Yes. <laughs> What's this yes. for? Why did you? Well it's from the Old Theatres magazine and it's basically awarding us for our success in keeping Britannia Panopticon open to the public. So it's to myself and all the volunteers that help us keep the building open. That's the incredible. The oldest music hall in the world. It is and we're open this weekend for music hall shows at 1.30 and 3.30. Excellent. So I'm the juvenile lead. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Listen, th thank you. Thank the award-winning Judith Bowers I on know, the show congratulations. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, that's brilliant. Looking forward to a new award next time and another history lesson. Um, now, we've got to take a short break, but stay with us because Colin will be jazz hands ready. Oh, oh 